Did you hear that? Oh yes, come this way. Come this way. This is what happens when this machine runs out of filament. And this is a project that's gonna take me a while. This is as good a time as any to talk about this project. No, ah oh, crap. Whatever, just roll the title. There you are, welcome back. There's a reason I'm in my garage and there is a reason it looks like Dexter up in here. Not me, nope. So this is a big machine and in the winter here in Seattle, it gets a little cold. The big machine needs to maintain some sort of ambient heat around it. Yeah, the, the heated plate gets nice and warm, but you know, that heat dissipates. And if the garage lets the heat out, then models can de-lamb or, or worse, right? So that's why there's all these tarps. That's why I've got a nice wide angle there. So you can take a look at these tarps. But listen, this machine just ran out of filament just now. Uh, here, let me, let me angle you up. Just... Dang it. So if you look, there's still a bunch of filament right here. One of the problems with this machine and what I've been doing with it is that the filament sensor is like a mile away from the hot end. And so look at all this filament right here. This is all waste, right? This is all from here because what I have to do now is snip this and load filament over there, way, way back there. The problem is I'm now out of 285 black filament. So I'm gonna have to use this stuff. So here's, here's what I'm gonna do. I can take a piece of filament and I can put it into the filament sensor so it thinks it's got filament and then I can hit go up here. So let me do that real quick. Ha ha, sweet. Okay, so now because I've run out of filament, what I need to do is manual filament detection. I already have a whole bunch of filament right here and I have a whole bunch of filament right here. So what I'm gonna do is get my nozzle back up to temperature. And once it's up to temperature, then I can start printing. And this will take 10 minutes or so to print. And then I can come and switch it out and pause the print. It's not optimal, but it's all the filament that I have left that's black and 2.85 millimeter. But we should talk about what this is while I'm doing this. Not that long ago, um, Simon reached out. Uh, let's see, he's Audio Simon on Twitter. And he offered to design a fully 3D printable speaker for me. Cool, right? And don't worry, this doesn't, I know that there's a Polymate 3D out there. Paul is actually doing a, a fully 3D printed speaker itself. And this isn't that, and I, I don't worry. I've got that on deck and we're gonna be doing that soon. But this is a fully 3D printed speaker enclosure. And I'm using this machine and a couple of machines at the studio to produce the parts. Okay, we're almost at the temperature, so I'll have to take a break here in just a moment. But the idea is this, this speaker, these floor standing speakers, I believe have a tweeter, a mid range and a subwoofer. Simon is an audio engineer. At least I think he's an audio engineer. He's someone who can design speaker enclosures given the parameters a speaker might need. And he reached out to Solon.ca, which is a Canadian audiophile place to get all sorts of really cool stuff like speakers and speaker components and stuff like that. So they're donating the speakers for this build, which is great. And this is all filament. Uh, a lot of it I purchased from Filament One. It's good stuff. And they were having a great sale. So I picked up a bunch of it. We're at temperature, let's start it. Uh, this, this has been a challenging build to say the least. I'm using the GMAX 2 and both CraftBots at the studio. And I'll talk about those in a, in a later video. This one though, this is the 3D Platform 300 Series Workbench Pro. And I'm printing PLA material from Filament One. This is all, let's see, this is at 80 degrees on the bed and it's 210 degrees C on the nozzle. The bed is slathered in Magiku because I want the adhesion. And I'm running into some issues because I don't know if you can tell, it's already lifted from the bed already up here. And that's why you see these kind of inconsistencies right here. This machine in all its glory still has some issues with holding things onto the bed, especially when you're printing with giant thick extrusions. I'm using the left extruder on this one and it's fit with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle and I'm doing 0.3 millimeter layer height. This isn't the first time I've started this print. Here, you can kind of see that this is one where it started to get an issue and you can kind of see it right there. Uh, the problem was uh, it's just, it's lifting. So if you look at these grills right here, 
because they're extrusions and they go this direction, they want to curl back this way, which then lifts the front off the build plate. I've got a brim, I've got magic goo. I was like, ah, oh, crap, it's lifting. Let me put more magic goo on and let me jump the bed to 80C. Maybe it'll hang on and uh, it didn't. It really, really didn't. So I don't, I don't know if it's gonna work. I hope it does. Anyway, this is the base. There's two top, there's a top portion, there's a cap, and then there's a front. And the front is what I wanna show you next. There we go, look at that. It's got a Joelbot on the front. These are the front of the speakers, and so they'll kind of go just like that. Uh, with it lifting, I don't know if that's gonna throw off dimensions, but this isn't where I started. <laughs> oh, I don't know if you can tell, but that's got a bit of a bend in it, right? I didn't, I'm not using that large of an extrusion, but still things like to curl. They like to curl like crazy. And it's all I can do to keep it on the bed. I was, I was thinking temperatures or what needed to happen, but no, no, that hasn't been it. So this nozzle here, this isn't the one that was on the machine. It was shipped with another nozzle, which is great because this one broke. So while I was printing one of these, the filament started to lift off the bed and it got in the way of this and it started to drag it around and then it got caught on something and then no joke, the filament snapped the hot end. It just snapped it in half. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. So it's right, right at the heat break. It just kinda, it was kinda going around. I went punk and it just popped right off. That was a low point, let me tell you. But eventually I added some brims and even though it lifted just a tiny bit, those brims held it down. I leveled the bed, everything's good. And so now we have this. Oh man, this is almost done. But thankfully I've been running my GoPro and I ran it for the last, I don't know, seven days. So we have a time lapse. I hope it looks good. Let's run it. That was a great time lapse, wasn't it? It's, it's crazy that the GoPro can record for so many days in a row. There were pauses and eventually I would, I would come down here and swap out the filaments and then it would get to printing again. According to the display, one hour, 58 minutes left. I don't know if I have enough to carry it, but I'll, I'll do my best. Fingers crossed. Six hours later. So at this point, the print is done. Bed's gonna be cooling down, it's 80C, ow hot. So it looks like uh, what I was able to do was, uh, let's see, I used three of these, I think, three or four. Now I don't even remember. I just set a timer on my phone. Each one took roughly 25, 30 minutes to go through. This is going to be warm for a while. We might be able to, to convince it to pop up, maybe. No. <laughs> no. Not at all. Okay. We're going to let this cool down, and then we'll pop this off. We'll see what it looks like. Later. It's cool. Uh, according to this, we're at 29.5 degrees C. Magigu should release. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Oh. Oh. It's still really, really hot right here. Wow. I don't know if it's because it was. Oh crap. Let me come around the other side. Uh, it cracked. It cracked getting it off the build plate. I used magic goo. Wow, it's like all the heat is just concentrated right here. Holy cow. That's hot. That is hot. Okay, well regardless, this is now off. Yes, it's broken at the bottom. And let's, let's uh, Take a look around. Here we go. Look. This is it. I mean, it's it's okay, right? You can kind of see the name right there. Look at that. Designed by Simon Ashton. 
Well, listen, so one last thing to do is to, uh, is to test. So I'm gonna use one of these failed prints. So it has registration marks here, and there's registration marks on the piece. It did lift a little bit, so I don't know if it's gonna line up. Here, let's do that. That way you can kind of see it. Okay. <laughs> it looks like um, because of the lift, I might need to shave it down just a smidge, I think. But essentially, oh, wow, it's tall. This is how tall they're gonna be. Speakers here, and there'll be a subwoofer in the back. And then uh, that's where the, that's the bass hole. I like my bass down low, right? Well, let's see, what did we, what did we learn today? We learned that the filament runout sensor on this machine is too far away and it results in a lot of potentially wasted filament. Uh, we did learn that what we could do is trick the sensor by shoving a small piece of filament into it and then manually monitoring it. That actually worked out okay. Uh, we learned that failed prints can cause a lot of damage to a machine, especially if the hot end gets caught and then snaps off. That sucks. We also learned that it takes a bit of effort to get a temperature, an ambient temperature maintained in a partially insulated garage. Wow. Some of the people had suggested that I go to a home improvement store and get one of those sheds, and then I could put the shed in here and then I could move the machine into the shed. We did learn that not all prints are optimized for this style of printer. This thing right here, this piece, it's, the whole head is fantastically heavy and the mechanism uh, just brings it up on two stilts. And so if it's doing some fast Y movements, it's just gonna vibrate back and forth. And obviously the longer the stilts, the more vibration there is. So I think that this machine isn't really meant for detail work. It's meant for more larger prints, I would imagine, or I could just slow it down, way down, as it gets uh, higher. That's always an option. Well, part one of the speakers are done. I think that this is fixable. I didn't know it was holding on to the heat, I swear. I know Magic Goo releases when it gets cold. The rest of the bed was cold. The thermistor said it was cold, and so I was like, what's going on? I had no indication that it was so hot under there. That was nuts. There was a lot of guesswork in this machine um, and having a glass bed. I don't know, there must be a better way to do a bed for this machine. Maybe something that could hold on to the material mechanically. In part two, you'll get to see what the print from the G-Max looks like and the prints from the CraftBots. And then uh, hopefully part three is assembling and test. Assembling and test. Well, I mean, a big thanks to Simon for designing this thing. I hope I'm doing you proud. Thanks to Solon.ca, Solon up in Canada. They're the ones that are providing all the components to make it sound really awesome. Thanks to Filament One for some fantastic filament. I'm glad you had it on sale because I just bought a whole bunch. Thank you. Uh, thank you 3DP Unlimited for this machine and its usage. Um, I know it's just on loan, but I'll, I'll see what more I can figure out to do with it. Listen, if you made this far, you're awesome. I uh, hope to see you on the next one. Don't forget to hug each other more from a safe distance. High five.